And so with the launch of Revived Witch coming up to about one week old, we are now looking towards our first event, Astral Mirror. However, before we go on, I do want to say that all of the information in this video and like from all of these posts, they are based on the CN official Revived Witch. And so I know that there are like disclaimers in all of these posts. It may not be an accurate reflection of how Yostar handles it. And I just really need to point that out. And the reason that I want to point that out is because I feel like and I'm not going to say too much on it, but I feel like Yosta are deviating a little bit from CN. And it may be a good thing or it may be a bad thing. I don't know yet, but I think generally it's going to be good. Hi, welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming event, hopefully Starlight Fantasy. And so Starlight Fantasy has been hinted at like quite a fair bit, especially throughout their Twitter. And so as you can see, we've got a couple of character drops. We do see some Philomelia faces if you have been watching the CN version. There have been a couple of changes, especially in terms of the art, sometimes like for better, sometimes for worse, in my opinion. And so with that being said, in this video, I do want to go through the event itself as well as the little bits of differences. And then on top of that, cover it in kind of like a guide capacity. So looking at like what to farm and like what to buy out, stuff like that. Kind of just like a shop priority and like some of the rationale behind some of these decisions. All right, and so with that being said, let's jump into it. I want to start with this guy over here because it's got images it'll be a lot more easier to tell it visually and so before we go anywhere i want to say a big shout out to ult123 on reddit thank you so much for this translation and then on top of that thank you to noctis2641 on discord for this one over here this is a fantastic spreadsheet and so just to kick things off for context for you gacha veterans we essentially are having a two-phased farming event for currencies each phase is one week long where the first phase is going to drop yellow stars and the second phase is going to drop red stars. That's just the currencies for each phase. And so using the yellow stars and the red stars, we'll be able to buy out things from the event shop down here. However, before we get there, let's have a look at the stages themselves. So this one over here, so Astral Mirror. All right, and so starting with this guy over here, there is a milestone system in which like the total amount of star pieces that you have gathered, as you gather more and more, and it doesn't matter if you consume them, you'll get better rewards. And so here are where some of the pools as well as the quads are actually taken up. There are going to be a lot more rewards. However, I just wanted to show you guys this because it's kind of hinting at what the event rewards are kind of going to be like. And I do want to point this out because it draws the parallel on what we've been farming so far and like the decisions we've made. Anyway, so let's move on. Phase one, normal and enhanced mode. So red and yellow where yellow is normal and then enhanced is going to be red. And so we've got seven resource maps and one boss map. So essentially in the resource maps, you you're able to farm those currencies, the yellow and the red. And then on the boss map itself, it actually doesn't require stamina, but it does give you some resources on the first clear and has a ranking challenge. And so if I remember correctly, I think all of the seven resource stages, like the stamina efficiency to the coins ratio is about the same. I'm pretty sure that it's dependent on the amount of stamina spent rather than the stage itself. All right, and so hopefully that was a pretty good visual representation of like the event. So let's hop over to this guy over here. And so what I want to start off here with is this guy over here there will be five bonus dolls in game up to a maximum of 50 percent per party and so as you can see ella nana and metamorphosis they are urs they give a 20 percent bonus each and then for the ssrs and below we've got nocturna we've got acaronte and we got witch and these all give a 10 percent bonus and remember this is the bonus to the event currency so if you farm a hundred of the yellow currency you'll get 150 instead all right and so this one validates i think what i was saying before one stamina equals to two event currency so you shouldn't be too worried in terms of spending the stamina wear and so as i mentioned before we have seven of these normal stages like barring the boss one and coming back over here we've got s1 to s6 drops a class specific basic and average quartz whereas s7 drops basic and average skill pack that's I, I am so happy to see this, to be honest. I don't know about you guys, but like skill farming has been such a nightmare, especially for like the blue and purple ones. But really in particular, like the blue scrolls, it's just been, uh, it just feels so inefficient to farm. And so seeing that they've actually built in the skill packs into like the stage itself, oh man, it's a dream come true. I know what I'll be farming. And so this kind of validates like a lot of the thinking that was at the start of the game. Like you want to be focusing on the equipments. You want to be focusing on like the ascensions and the passive and your skill prize 
priorities at the very end. And so, yeah, this is great news for us that has been following that kind of philosophy. And so moving into the second phase where we are going to be getting the red stars from the event map from BS1 through to BS6, we're going to be getting average and advanced courts. And then BS7 is going to give us average and advanced skill pack. And then the last point here, there will be an accumulated rewards for the yellow star max at 3.5k. Notable rewards are the four summons and 30 iris feathers. That is exactly what I just showed you over here. And this is the accumulated rewards. So apparently it's only going to be for the yellow stars. Okay. And so let's start looking at the store. Let's start thinking about efficiencies. And so to kick things off, we've got the yellow store. Total yellow star needed is 5.52k, which is a pretty decent amount. And if you guys remember 5.52k of the yellow stars, one stamina is equal to two event currency. That means we need about 2.7k stamina to be able to clear out the yellow store. So about 2.7k stamina and that split across about seven days. I believe that comes out to about 400 stamina a day, which is quite a fair bit, but like nothing a little bit of refreshing can't do. I think that combined with like the daily potion that we get from the dailies, as well as if you got like the monthly or like one or two refreshes, this store should be really, really easy to clear out. And my guys, please don't be too hesitant on refreshing. Like you guys have already seen the mirror. The mirror gives us massive bank. That 40 jemmies for the first refresh for the extra stamina, it's going to equate to a lot over here. And so just looking through these guys, we've got Akaronte, which is the welfare unit. So guys, I reckon that this is our top priority because getting Akaronte means that you're going to be getting 10% more of the event currency as you farm it. And speaking of that, like my calculations just then did not incorporate any of the bonuses. And so that is like the worst case scenario if you don't have any of the characters. So realistically speaking, you're probably not going to actually need to refresh and just like use the pots. However, like speaking of the stamina pots, I do want to talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, Akaronte, Akaronte Soul Stones, I believe like those and the Summon Stone are probably going to be your top priority. And then of course your feathers and then your split scale and then like the rest, right? Your furniture and your mana. But my guys, to be honest, we should be aiming to clear the entire store. And so the real priority would be getting Akaronte first so that you get more of the currencies. And then if your team is feeling a bit weak, you're going to be looking at the Iris Feathers and the mana for like juicing them up. And then by the end of the week, you're going to be able to get all of that anyway. It's just that is like in terms of if you're having trouble progressing, but otherwise it's pretty much just Akarante first. That's it. All right. So moving on to the red store over here, total red star required is 5.5k, very similar to the above. And so this is a pretty nice store as well. We get the rest of the soul stones for the welfare character. We're also going to be getting summon stones, same, 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 except down here, we've got advanced skill pack and advanced rune stone. And so all in all, I think it kind of speaks for itself. Again, you guys should be looking to clear out the entire red store. However, this one has a little bit of a caveat where this guy down here, it's a, it's an anomaly. Let's put it that way. In most games, when you have excess event currency, it typically is like the worst value ratio kind of thing. However, the good thing about this one over here, 8K mana for one cost of these red stars, this guy right here is more efficient than mana six, which is, which is pretty nuts. And the way that it is more efficient is because 8,000 mana. And so for 30 stamina, instead you could be getting 60 coins. And so 60 of the red stars multiplied by 8,000 mana gets you 480,000 mana. And so at this point, it does sound less efficient than the mana six stage. However, don't forget that there is the multiplier for your characters. So the moment that you're running the new characters, the metamorphosis, the Ellas, the witch, stuff like that, this is going to skyrocket. It's going to scale up. And so that is why this guy is worth farming if you are low on mana. However, this same logic actually does not apply to the yellow store. So you see the 4,000 mana here, yellow star. You can already see a 4,000 mana. That is half the mana for the same cost. This guy is not worth it. And so my recommendation would be that if you are going to be farming mana, then try save your stamina pots for the second week for the red store. However, you do need to make sure that you are clearing the yellow store as well. All right. And so hopefully you guys kind of understand the logic behind that one over there. And so old mate has put together a priority. You can most certainly use this if you want. And so just looking through this Akarante because of the event bonus, very similar to what I just said. Summon stone because we love the summoning. Iris feather because we love the feathers. We have so many magic teams. And then we've got the advanced rune stone for re-rolling equipments. I cannot agree with that more. And then mana and then skill material and the soul stones are not option. Soul stones are not optional. Unless you're not a completionist, then that's okay with me. However, again, the priority is kind of mer, and this is like not his fault. It's just the fact that we will always be aiming to clear out the shops. 
And so yeah, that's the shop efficiencies. Uh, advanced Quartz is not recommended since you will have an overflow of them. So for this one, I think he is alluding to this guy over here, the Average and Advanced Quartz. So it sounds like he's recommending us farm BS7 for the Average and Advanced Skill Pack, which certainly makes sense. So that's a good one there. And the last thing that I did forget to talk about is the recommendation. So the highest recommendation is A3 level 40. Like even if you guys have been taking ultra, ultra casually, you should be able to hit A3 level 40 by the time the event starts. And we are expecting the event to start in about a week's time. Within a week, I think some people are saying within four days, something like that. And so if you guys are not ready, get on it. And I just wanted to say something and it's for the people who keep trashing on Witch. I know Witch can't go A4, but my guys, as you can see, Witch is always going to be relevant, especially from an event farming perspective. And so technically speaking, whilst you don't need Witch, she is certainly going to be very helpful. Like for me, I have Ella, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull Nana or Metamorphosis. Right now, my luck in this game is just so trash. And so I just have to make it up with these three. Nocturna, Akronte, which is the welfare and then Witch and then plus the Ella, I should be okay. All right. And so to kind of wrap this video up, I want to show you guys uh, each of the new characters and what is different about them. And so welcome to the global version of each of the dolls. So let's start off with Nana. And so in this video, I won't be doing evaluations for them. I'll be looking to do that in the next video. I just wanted to show you guys that there is quite a significant deviation from the CN art. And so again, this is the global Nana. Take a good look at her and let's switch over and see this is the CN Nana. And so for this piece of artwork, I think that like, I reckon the global one is actually better. However, generally speaking, the sprite itself is staying the same. And so like from a fidelity, point of view, I think that the splash art does represent the sprite. However, moving on, we've got Metamorphosis next, which is a Compella Salt Stone. So as you can see, this is our Metamorphosis. And so let me quickly switch over this is the metamorphosis on CN. I think that this piece of art is fantastic and I am just not a really big fan of this one at all. Unfortunately, I look at this and I look at the sprite and it's almost like completely different. There is like virtually no purple in this color scheme, but like the biggest thing for me is that the skin tone of this one is much, much warmer than like the white on her splash art. I personally think that metamorphosis like this, this one is way, way better, the CN version. I guess even from like a style point of view, like some, something about this just isn't sitting right with me. And so with that being said, let's have a look at Akarante. This is our new welfare character. She is going to be an SSR. And so as you can see, I think that this, this splash art is very representative of her pixel art. And so her CN counterpart is this one over here. I personally thought that this piece of art is actually quite good. Uh, it is representative of the pixel art, which is what it was based on. However, the global version, like I look at this and I look at the pixel art and I'm like, yeah, it's it could be the same character except for the fact that like the pixel had a crown and she doesn't have a crown but the cn version does have a crown up here and so it's these kinds of details which make me feel like oh i'm not really 100 percent behind like the art changes from cn to global it's not that the global art is worse it's just that it's not representative of what's in the pixel and so when i kind of see a disconnect and honestly this one is okay but it's really this one over here this disconnect is like it's kind of weird and i i really would invite your start to rethink about like what they're doing with this and so that's the art changes in terms of systems in terms of skills like for the event and stuff i don't know however again next video we will be looking through all of these characters and how they fit in the meta should you roll for them and all that but like with that being said we are done today here. And so I want to leave you guys with a secret question. And it's that, well, are you pumped for this new event? I certainly am. I am so, so sick of farming equipments. And like, oh man, this just feels like freaking bad when you're running the same stage over and over and over again. And I know it's going to be something similar for the event, but like at least we're getting different kinds of rewards from like this guy over here. For me, for the past few days, all I've been doing is equipment farming. And it's just, oh, just seeing and molding over those freaking trash drops just sucks. And on top of that, that I'm hoping that there is going to be story so yeah and so that's what I think but what I think is not as important as what you guys think and so if you guys could leave your thoughts down in the comments below I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video but otherwise again massive shout out to you LT123 as well as Noctis I believe and so if you are grateful to them for the resources go hit them up and if you are grateful for me for this video if this video has helped you then please consider a like on it and if you haven't already also please consider a subscribe however as Nana once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.